This area here is one of the areas you might find a Dixie Valley toad. They like these really thick vegetated areas. In this remote stretch of Nevada desert, about three hours from Reno, researchers made a surprising discovery, a new species of toad. And I was like, there's no way. This is impossible because a new toad species north of Mexico hasn't been described in like 50 years. The Dixie Valley toad is about the size of a credit card, has big bulging eyes, and is believed to have inhabited the valley since the time of the woolly mammoth. There's no place on the planet that has a Dixie Valley toad, just this one small spot. All that time, the toad has survived via the heat of underground hot springs. The hot water allows it to survive through the winter and then burrow and actually maintain its life cycle. But the tiny toad has a big problem. The same heat that warms its habitat also makes the area attractive for a coveted type of renewable energy. We're in Dixie Valley, Nevada. Behind us, we have a partially constructed geothermal plant. In 2021, an international energy company received a permit to build a geothermal power plant next to the toad's habitat. Geothermal energy drills deep underground to the hottest layers of the earth and converts that heat into steam. The steam then turns turbines, which generate electricity. It's not exactly a new idea. Is this a viable solution, geothermal? It definitely is. Today, the Biden administration sees geothermal as a 24-7 renewable energy source to help fight climate change. With the right investments and incentives, we can increase the power that we generate from, from the heat beneath our feet 47-fold by 2050. So the Biden administration has really emphasized geothermal energy as a way to provide carbon-free power to the grid. But in the Dixie Valley, biologists have raised concerns that the plant could impact the hot springs. That, in turn, could end up threatening the toads. In 2021, the Bureau of Land Management gave approval for the plant to move forward. Weeks later, an environmental nonprofit sued. The nonprofit's case was helped in 2022, when the Dixie Valley toad was listed as an endangered species. The plant sits half-built while the government undertakes further environmental review. There is this kind of clash right now between clean energy evangelists who want to develop and provide renewable energy to the grid and local conservation groups like the Center for Biological Diversity that you know see this as being a really special place. We've been pretty clear that you know one of the lines we're going to draw is extinction. The power plant itself has no impact on the toad whatsoever. We've never had a take of a species. The renewable energy plant or the threatened toad? A central issue? Should a decades-old permitting law that has been a bedrock of American environmentalism be reformed? Air pollution already is so bad and getting worse so rapidly that some scientists are predicting that we'll run out of fresh air to breathe in 10 to 35 years. In the 1960s, industrial pollution was rampant. Images of wildlife drenched in oil filled the evening news. Rivers were catching on fire. Burn on, big river. Burn on. That was a clear indication that environmental protection was becoming more important to Americans than it had been previously. People start pollution. People can stop it. Welcome, sulfur dioxide. Over the next decade, Congress passed a slew of environmental laws. In 1970, Richard Nixon signed the National Environmental Policy Act, or NEPA. It was really the first federal statute adopted to deal with environmental problems and kicked off what many re referred to as the environmental decade of the 1970s. This is Robert Glicksman, a professor of environmental law at George Washington University Law School. He says the law required the government to study the environmental impacts of proposed actions and then make those findings available to the public. NEPA was designed to force federal agencies to think about 
the environmental consequences of what they were proposing to do before committing to particular projects. Here's how the National Environmental Policy Act works. There are three categories of actions that trigger some kind of NEPA evaluation. The least comprehensive is a project that's covered by a categorical exclusion. Those are actions that typically aren't going to have environmental consequences. They're routine. The vast majority of agency actions up for review are granted an exclusion, meaning they are clear to move forward. But a project that does have the potential to impact the environment, the agency conducts an environmental assessment. And the core feature of environmental assessment is what's called a finding of no significant impact. We've looked at this, we've studied whether or not this is a problematic project from the environmental perspective, and we've determined that the answer is no. But if the impact is significant, the agency must conduct an even more stringent review called an environmental impact statement. It's got to really consider all aspects of the action and the ways in which it might have significant environmental effects. At each level of analysis, the lead agency makes the finding available for public comment. In the past, environmental advocates have used NEPA to slow or kill fossil fuel projects. But in recent years, renewable energy has become a target. To permit a geothermal facility today on federal lands, in a best case scenario, it takes about four years. Which brings us back to the Dixie Valley. As you may have guessed, the geothermal plant did not receive a categorical exclusion. It required a more thorough environmental assessment. In 2021, the Bureau of Land Management had an environmental assessment and it found no significant impact on the toad species which then allowed construction of the plant to begin. But here's where things got wonky. In 2022, a separate agency came in with a different finding, that the geothermal plant could affect the toad species, and it listed the toad under the Endangered Species Act. The plant's developer agreed to halt construction pending further environmental review. That project, we spent about six years on the permitting of the power plant, where we could have been looking at all of these issues. In Washington, a movement to speed the development of clean energy projects is gathering steam, pun intended. And today, in the wake of the climate crisis, the Biden administration is looking for further ways to speed up the permitting process. In this administration, with this president who has an incredibly ambitious agenda to address climate change, these are issues that really require us to take action at the moment. Brenda Mallory heads the Council on Environmental Quality, or CEQ. It's an office in the White House that was created under NEPA to give agencies guidance on how to comply with the law. Mallory says climate change has created an urgency to reform NEPA while still balancing community interests. I always feel like you have to, there has to be a balance on like what's appropriate. How do you make the system work faster, but do it in a way that still continues to protect people? NEPA supporters worry that changing the law will come at the expense of local environmental concerns, like the Dixie Valley toad. At the center, we support renewable energy. Not every site is appropriate for development. If we want to meet the administration's goals of developing this you know, prolific, fantastic uh, renewable resource, we need to expedite the permitting process. Meanwhile, in the Dixie Valley, the toad carries on, as it has done for millennia unaware of the fight over which is a greater threat to its existence. The geothermal plant or the climate crisis it's being built to solve. <laughs>